welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host Jack and this is another video tutorial of using Photoshop Elements. Please if you have not yet checked it out go to jackstechcorner.com and check out all the DVD releases I have there. If, you're, if you uh, enjoy this video then look on the right hand side where it says more on the YouTube video and click on there. Click on the link to go back to my website look at all the DVD collections. I'm sure you'll be very impressed and it's nice to have those for your library. Also, if you're a green screen photographer and you do any green screening at all or video um, and you want some green screen equipment, on my website there's the green screen wizard. Click on that graphics and it'll take you to my friend site Ken who created the green screen wizard. You may want to check out what he has to offer. In this video tutorial, I thought I would tell you about, we're going to call this catalog protection. Now, what is the catalog, first of all? The catalog, a lot of people don't understand with Photoshop Elements, is the place where the database is actually sitting. And the backend database is actually uh, where all the images, not the images themselves are stored, but all the information about the images in your Photoshop organizer, your Elements organizer, where all that information is located. Now I recently had to reformat my, my hard drive and reload windows, which does happen from time to time. So I'm going to give you a little word of advice and teach you a little bit uh, more in depth about uh, how to protect that catalog or that database. The first thing I did when I set my computer up was, and you can find these uh, videos I'm sure on YouTube on how to partition. Or look on Google and do a search for partitioning hard drives. That's partitioning hard drives. I have a 500 gigabyte hard drive in my computer, but 500 gigabytes on a C drive is kind of an overkill. It's very, very large, and it can get very unorganized as far as the sectors go on the hard drive. So what you wanted to do was create a partition on that hard drive, actually two partitions. I have a C drive, so the computer thinks that I basically have two hard drives in my computer, but it's one drive split into two pieces. Right now I'm under computer management. Now this is a Windows XP machine. All you have to do is right click on my computer and go to manage. Or actually it is, yes, manage. And that takes you into the computer management. Then I clicked on disk management. Here's where you can see all of your hard drives in your computer your CD drives and whatever other drives. These are removable camera drives I have on the computer. But we're talking mainly about the C drive or the, the primary disk in the computer that I have partitioned. Then what I do is I created another partition and I called that the D drive. And I just simply uh, name mine just so I can you know know what it is I guess but I always put the name on their data. What that drive does it's for all my storage. It holds all my pictures it holds all my uh, you know, personal documents, anything like that I store on this D drive. The reason you want to do that is if you have to reload Windows on your C drive, you can just simply format the C drive or this half of the partition, reload Windows, and you don't have to worry about that D drive. It's not going anywhere, so all your data stays intact. So why is that important? Let me close out of here. It's important because when you look in my computer, you now see you have a C drive and a D drive. Most people think that's two totally separate logical disks. The computer believes it is, but we know that it's one hard drive with two different partitions. If you look here and I click on it, over here you have information that there's free space 79.7 gigs, so I made this almost 100 gigabytes, the C drive. Where this drive I made it almost 400 gigs. You see I have free space 225 gigabytes, total space is 368. Even though it's the same physical drive, the computer believes it's two different hard drives entirely. Then what I did when I set up my Photoshop Elements, I actually went in here and I made a folder called Elements Catalog. And this is the backend database of the Elements package itself. Now why is that important? The reason it's important is because under my documents you go in here we're going to look under my pictures 
all my pictures are stored on that D partition also. So what I did was I kind of got very fortunate and I was kind of worried because I know I preached to everybody backup, backup, backup. Well, sometimes when your computer dies, you don't have the most recent backup that you'd want to have. So I did have a backup, but it wasn't all my pictures. So what I did was you have to load Photoshop elements. Well, primarily you have to load them on your C drive. So I had to restore, like I said, the C drive. So when I load it up, here, let me close out of this one now. When I installed the Photoshop Elements once again on the C drive, it came up with a blank uh, open, uh, basically organizer, right? There's nothing in there. All I had to do at that point was go under File, and I went to Catalog, and then in the catalog, I just had to do a custom location. I clicked Browse, and as you can see, I went to my D drive, which wasn't touched, and I opened up the Elements Catalog. At that point, when I clicked Open, it took a few seconds, and it repopulated this interface with all of the pictures that I have stored on my D drive. But more importantly than the pictures, you know, the pictures are pretty important, was all these different albums I already laid out and all these tags that I already got going on here. You know, and that was the big thing, was just being able to uh, have all that back together and uh, up to date from the last time I used Elements. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope I didn't confuse you. It's, it's a little bit more advanced, but it's very, very important. You can also take all those if you want to. Say you have uh, the C drive on your computer. You just have a hard drive on your computer, and you want to purchase another drive, like an external backup drive. You know, a lot of us aren't techy enough to open the computer up and put a new hard drive in. But anybody can plug a USB cable into the computer, right? It's very simple. We do that with our printers. Buy yourself a 500 gig or maybe even now a 1 terabyte external storage drive. You know, you spend about $100 to $150. And move all those pictures and move your catalog and get everything set up and organized on that external storage drive. Then if your computer should get a virus or crash or have to be re restored at any time, you don't have to worry because everything's on that external storage drive and you're ready just to open it up just like I taught you here. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Once again, like I said, if you've enjoyed these videos, go ahead and look at jackstechcorner.com and look at the DVD selections. You know, and there's also a couple write-ups on there I have from uh, folks that's written in that's actually purchased the DVDs. And it helps to support these shows. It helps to take care of that website, jackstechcorner.com, amongst other things like equipment and uh, uh, stuff we need here for, you know, for the shop to actually record the videos for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you back here very, very soon. So for now, like always, keep those shutters clicking and keep the editors editing. Take care of those pictures. Back them up often. You know, it would be nice if there was a way in there just to click it and say, back it up when I make any changes. But unfortunately, that's not there yet. So take care. I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.